Hello, it is 1 p.m. in Juba. It's 6 a.m. at the Kennedy Space Center. I'm Monita Rajpal. You're watching World One live from London. They built their careers by uncovering scandals and splashing them on the front page. Now the tables have turned. The Times says journalists and newspaper executives at the center of a phone hacking scandal are expected to be arrested within days. A separate report says Rupert Murdoch's News of the World is suspected of illegally eavesdropping on the families of soldiers killed overseas. On Wednesday, the British Prime Minister called the newspaper's tactics absolutely disgusting. He said a public inquiry should be held after police have finished their investigation. Dan Rivers has been following the scandal engulfing Rupert Murdoch's company. He joins us now from uh, the Prime Minister's residence at Downing Street. And Dan, tell us about the kind of the, the latest uh, uh, installment, the latest uh, re revelation is that there have been uh, accusations of ha hacking into the, the, um, the bereaved families uh, of, of soldiers who've been, uh, uh, who've been killed overseas. Tell us about the reaction to that. Well, as you can expect, uh, Manita, there has been a uh, reaction of anger and disgust at those uh, uh, new revelations uh, this morning. The uh, former head of the UK forces, Colonel Richard Kemp, has said he's speechless with uh, okay. Dan anger. Rivers at number 10 Downing Street, thank you so much. Well, let's see what newspapers are saying about this. The Irish Independence headline, with press freedom comes responsibility. It goes on to say several commentators have described the hacking into the phone of missing girl Millie Dowler as a tipping point. So it is, and so it should be, but who and what should be tipped remains as difficult as ever. The International Herald Tribune's headline is The Greater Evil. It says, outrage is a word badly weakened by overuse. This is unfortunate because it would be good to have now at full strength for the despicable things the news of the world is accused of doing. And finally, here in Britain, the Guardian newspaper has this headline, a real phone hacking inquiry must defeat ministers' tricks. It goes on to say in the opinion piece, if an inquiry is properly conducted then at the very least it will drag out a lot of hidden truths, make a lot of otherwise unaccountable people accountable and give the news media, the police and the government a lot of things to think about. Remember, you can read all those articles in full at facebook.com for W1 slash W1 CNN. We turn now to troubling images out of Sudan. Just days before the country splits in two, satellite pictures reveal a heavy buildup of Sudanese troops along the border with its new southern neighbor. A monitoring group says the pictures show convoy of trucks and artillery moving through the city of Kadugli. The group says it's uh, two kilometers in length and backed up by around a thousand government troops. Kadugli is in the oil-rich state of southern Kordofan. It's been the scene of recent heavy fighting between the Sudanese army and troops linked to the south. Well, it is only a week since the two sides signed an agreement on border security, but security, as we're seeing, is still clearly a huge concern. Sina Nim al Bagir is in the southern capital of Juba, and she joins us now live with more on that. And uh, Nema, as we've been reporting on these concerns of reports of potential trouble on the horizon, there are still preparations underway. Uh, is, there, is there concern where, you're, where you are right now? Well, it does seem to be that at the moment, this is a time where people are putting aside all the issues that still hang over this nascent nation. The story is about the victims of violence in Syria. We want to warn you, it contains video which may be too graphic for some of you. Over the last four months, the country has been gripped by popular uprisings to which the government has reacted with violence. Uh, CNN's Arwa Damon goes undercover with a Syrian doctor as he risks his life to save others. On concrete floors, in secret locations, on Phenomenon without equal, with branding estimated to be worth billions and a cult following that spans the globe. Tonight, the credits will roll on Harry Potter's final film. And as the world premieres right here in London, we thought we'd head down there to see how the diehard fans are feeling. Oh yeah, we go every year to like the premieres and stuff, so definitely we're going to come to a last I one. I count myself to Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> well, Harry Potter may be coming to an end, but has J.K. Rowling made the most of her magic? Jim Bolden takes a look at what other tricks the author has up her sleeve. 
It may be the end of an era for the boy wizard, but book to movie franchises certainly haven't had their day just yet. Let's see which ones could break Harry Harry's billion dollar spell. Well, she's a famous lady if you don't know who she is. Like J.K. Rowling, this author is a bright mom with a big imagination. Stephanie Meyer wrote the four vampire novels in the Twilight series. She says the idea came to her in a dream. Now, the first installment uh, took a bite out of the box office on its opening weekend, raking in more than $70 million in the U.S. The final installment, like Harry Potter, has been split into two parts. Here's a clip for all of those uh, twi-hard fans, as they're called, for the upcoming Breaking Dawn, part one. I bet many can't wait for that. Well, director Peter Jackson will be recreating uh, J.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, which uh, preceded The Lord of the Rings. And that movie franchise starring Elijah Wood took a collective 17, that's right, 17 Oscars. Now, uh, the stars of the Chronicles of Narnia, as you know, is a series of seven fantasy novels, the same number as Harry Potter, but there have been only three films so far, including the successful Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Now, there's a movie that uh, could be have been used to wave uh, Harry's magic wand, The Golden Compass. It's based on a trilogy by uh, Philip Pullman. It was pillared by some groups who said it was anti-religious. There has been no mention of a sequel. Now, there has been a whole gamut of weather conditions across the globe, but here in Europe, we're expecting some wet and windy conditions. Let's go to meteorologist Jennifer Delgado at the World Weather Center. Hey, Jen. Hi, Manita. Uh, expecting, you're already getting the weather right now. We're talking the rainy conditions. No, the no it's true. And you know what? Well, I've, I saw the first one. I didn't right. follow the rest of them, but I'm still, I don't think I'm a fan of anything, well, that big of a fan of anything to want to go and brave the wet weather and wait outside long enough. Neither am I. Not for me. <laughs> right, Borrow Jen, an umbrella thank you very today. Much. Take care. Yeah, no kidding. All right, well, let's take a look at what's uh, trending on social media right now. At number three, Johnny Depp, the Hollywood actor, is reportedly on the verge of signing up for another Pirates of the Caribbean movie. The news has created a lot of chatter among fans online. Now, if Depp does take the role, it'll be the fifth time he'll have played Captain Jack Sparrow. At number two, as we've been talking about, Harry Potter mania is in the air. There's lots of excitement about the premiere of the final movie in the franchise. And as Jen has been saying, fan has, fans have been camping out in Leicester Square here in London, waiting to catch a glimpse of the Potter stars and fans on social media are just as excited. And at number one, Facebook's launching season, users of the popular social network are now able to make video calls from their Facebook page. The new development comes thanks to a partnership with Skype, and it is the first new product in what Mar a Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg calls launching season. You're watching World One, live from London. Hacked off, outrage over a phone hacking scandal in Rupert Murdoch's media empire. The in just a few hours from now, a judge in Florida will pass sentence on Casey Anthony. The woman cleared this week of murdering her daughter, but found guilty of lying to the police investigating Kaylee's death. She could walk out of court a free woman. One of the jurors who acquitted her of murder is speaking out uh, about the verdict for the first time. China's CNN official state media has dismissed reports that former President Jiang Zemin is dead. There was widespread speculation that the 84-year-old former leader had passed away. Well, despite the denial, China has gone to some extraordinary lengths to prevent speculation about his death on the Internet. CNN's Christy Liu Stout is in Hong Kong. She can tell us more about that. Christy. Manita, Beijing says reports of the death of Jiang Zemin are, quote, pure rumor. Now, Xinhua issued a denial that the former Chinese president had passed away. And the rumors, they began on July 1st, on Friday. That was when Jiang Zemin failed to attend the 90th anniversary celebration of the founding of the Chinese Communist Christy, Party. Christy, thank you very much. You're watching World One, live from London. Argentina may have the best footballer on the planet, but... A host of star names, including the World Footballer of the Year, but Argentina are struggling in the Copa America. Alex Thomas has more on that. And the day's other top sports headlines. Yes, Manita. After a disappointing World Cup quarterfinal exit 12 months ago, Argentina... Now he does next week. All right. Thank you very much for that, Alex. You're watching World One live from London.
The countdown is on for the final part of a 30-year adventure, but only if the weather cooperates. The NASA space shuttle Atlantis is in place. It is due to blast off just before noon on Friday. This is now live from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. How's the weather looking there, John? Yeah, you can look over my right shoulder at the vehicle assembly building there behind me and you get a pretty good idea that it's just ugly here this morning that uh thing about the united states and one thing i noticed when i lived there for a few years it is such a patriotic country americans are very patriotic and nationalistic it, what has this done to i mean is there is there a real sense of sadness uh over the ending of this well you know you wonder about that you really do certainly around here and around the space coast always uh, john thank you so much and of course we keep our fingers crossed sure. for the weather tomorrow picking up and hopefully yeah. it's all systems go john zarella there at the kennedy space center thank you so much sure. well just take you back down memory memory lane a little bit it's been quite the journey through the years for the atlanta space shuttle first delivered to the kennedy space center back in april of 1985. Um, a successful mission in september 2006 saw six astronauts conduct six spacewalks at the International Space Station. Some of these amazing images that you're seeing here. Now in February 2007, preparations for another mission were underway when the fuel tank attached to the shuttle was damaged in a hailstorm. Adding to that, just a few months later in June, Atlantis launched successfully with seven crew on board heading for the space station. Amazing, again, these uh, amazing guys there. Uh, just over two weeks later, Atlantis landed safely at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The first time a shuttle had landed there since 2005. And Space Shuttle's Atlantis Discovery and Endeavor were each designed to fly 100 missions, though altogether they have flown fewer than that. And that is your look at World One. Thank you for watching. I'm Monita Raj. Paul Denise continues in just a bit.